Before we have our calculations, here are some tips to help you solve problems related to the law of conservation of energy. This will also help you determine whether or not conservation is applicable in a given scenario given the description that you can identify on the physical system. Number one, you have to understand the scenario and create a mental picture of it. If you cannot illustrate of what is happening in the situation in your mind, chances are it will be hard for you to solve the problem. Number two, study the forces under consideration. You have to identify which one is acting on another. Identify the system as well as the given and the known values. Lastly, carefully establish which of which are in initial and final positions. Number three, ask yourself, is the mechanical energy conserved or not? How will you know that? There is no presence of non-conservative forces like friction, air resistance, and applied force. Number four, this is where you will apply the principles of conservation of energy, which we studied in the previous video. And lastly, check whether your answer is or is not a reasonable. Okay, now I think you're ready. Let us have these two examples. A coin has fallen from an initial height of 5 meters. Determine the coin's velocity when it is 2.5 meters above the ground. Here, it is obvious that we are looking for the coin's final velocity. The next step we do is to identify the forces involved in the initial and final positions. Here, we can understand that the gravitational force is the sole force exerted on the coin. In the initial position, which is 5 meters, and the final position, which is 2.5 meters, are given in the problem. Since the coin is acted only by the force of gravitation, our initial velocity is 0 meter per second. Since there are no other forces acting on the coin, the mechanical energy is conserved in this system. And therefore, we can use the equation K E sub Y plus P E sub I is equal to K E sub F plus P E sub F. Alternatively, we can expand these quantities into its own formula, and we will get this equation. In this case, the coin is falling freely, and therefore we will ignore the mass. Our velocity is also zero, and therefore we will get G y sub 1 is equal to 1 half v sub 2 e square plus g y sub 2. We are interested to find the v sub 2 or final velocity, which we can get by rearranging this equation as the square root of 2g times y sub 1 minus y sub 2. We will simply substitute the given values as follow. Perform the operation as indicated, and the final answer we will get 7.0 meter per second and that is the coin's velocity at 2.5 meters above the ground. Let us try number two. A 1050 kilogram roller coaster car was found at a vertical height of 30 meters on the ride's second hill where it slows and pauses for a moment. If it has moved a total distance of 250.75 meters from the first hill which is 50 meters high Calculate the following, the heat produced and the average friction force exerted on the car. It is noted here to consider all possible effects of friction. There are two things we need to identify in this problem. First is the heat energy produced and second, the average friction force of the car. The next step we would do is to first identify the system. Second is to identify the forces acting on the system and third, we will establish the initial and final positions. Here, the system is roller coaster car upon which the earth exerts gravitational force. There are two forces acting on that system. One is I mentioned already, gravitational force and the other one is frictional force. The initial position will be set at the position of the roller coaster prior to its coasting on the first hill. The second point will be the vertical height of 30 meters on the second hill. 
we can always say that the lowest point will be zero, accounting for its gravitational potential energy. Now that we have a mental picture of what is happening in the system, you will identify whether the mechanical energy is conserved or not. There is a presence of friction force, and therefore, mechanical energy is not conserved. Therefore, you will use the equation K e sub i plus P e sub i is equal to K e sub f plus P e sub f plus f d. Let us now substitute some values. Since it is not moving, the kinetic energy is zero. Then we add the initial potential energy, which we can compute using the formula mgh. Let us substitute the values as mass is 1050 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second square times initial height of 50 meters is equal to zero, the final kinetic energy multiplied by the final potential energy which we will use MGH again, but this time using the final elevation of 30 meters plus FD, which is still unknown. This FD is the energy dissipated as heat. Let us have some calculations here. Force is equal to mass times gravity, then displacement is 50 meters minus 30 meters, which we will have 2.06 times 10 raised to 4 joules. Now that we get the energy dissipated as heat, we will solve the friction force exerted over the distance of 250.75 meters. This can be computed using the formula F is equal to FD over X sub F, where X sub F is your horizontal distance. Substituting these values as follow, we will get 821.54 newtons friction force. Therefore. From these computations, the energy dissipated the heat is 2.06 times 10 raised to 5 joule, while the friction force is 821.54 newtons.